Uh, Hans Jung Kim Lang and Claude Romney already spoke about her, and this afternoon Professor Greif will also give a speech about uh, Adelaide Howell. Uh, how do we continue here? Oh, yes. There were opposite behaviors of the portrait physician concerning medical experimentation performed by Nazi physicians in Auschwitz. Dr. Vladislav Dering, at, in 1964 in London, he said the common opinion was that there was no sense in refusing. Dr. Schumann sent girls to me in the theater and I could not refuse. To refuse would be sabotage. That meant only one thing in the camp. But Dr. Adelaide Howell said, Dr. Wirtz asked my, me my opinion on sterilization and I answered that it was absolutely opposite to it. I answered that we had no right to dispose of the life and destiny of others. Uh, Dr. Dorota Lorska, also called Dorita Kleinmann, uh, I know of many who did not carry out their orders in the first place, Dr. Oval. Dr. Adelaide Hoval was born in 1906, she died in 1988. She was a writer among the nation in 1965. And after her death, Moshe Beski sent a letter to the family and he stated that she was one of the most remarkable persons humankind has ever known. <laughs> She was the daughter, the youngest daughter of uh, the family of the Protestant pastor, Philip Hoval. This is a picture taken in 1910 in the, the small village uh, in the Vosges, close to Strasbourg, where Pastor Philip Hoval uh, exercised. And she was the youngest uh, daughter of uh, this uh, family. Pastor Hoval was inherently francophile, and he reverenced the Jews as the people of the book. And she said later, this reverence for the Jews has never left me. I can never forget that they have suffered more than any other people in history. This was, uh, uh, she gave this uh, sentence in uh, 1972 to a British uh, uh, journalist. Uh, she studied medicine in Strasbourg and she became a psychiatrist in 1934. She was arrested by the end of May, May 1942 in Vierzon, and she was sent to the prison in Bourges after an altercation with two German policemen. And in the, she was in the prison in Bourges for about six um, uh, weeks, and a Jewish woman had been put in our cell, and I discovered that she was bearing a yellow star. She whipped up her jacket to attract the attention of the Gestapo. I made one myself with paper, and she refused to remove this uh, uh, st uh, star from her uh, coat. And the Gestapo said to her, as you are defending them, you, should, you shall share their fate. And she was asked to sue this band, Friend of Jews, on her coat. She was sent to prisons and concentration camps in France, first Pithiviers, then Bord la Rolande, the prison of Orléans, and lately uh, to the fort of uh, Romainville from the beginning of November 1942 to the end of December 1943. And she was deported in the convo convoi du 24 janvier, the convoy of January 24, 1943, with 229 other resistant women. They were not Jewish, they were resistant. Of course, um, among them, Charlotte Delbo, Daniel Casanova, Marie-Claude Vaillant-Couturier, and uh, Adelaide Hovell, of course. This convoy was called the convoy of the 31,000 because in Auschwitz they get a number beginning with uh, 31. Uh, she was first uh, in, at the, the camp in Birkenau and was to take care of the German uh, woman. Uh, as a doctor, I was assigned to the German women's quarter. It is the best equipped, the most hygienic, and get, gets most of the drugs assigned to the camp. In that quarter, the German women, the entirety of the nursing staff, and the patients are almost exclusively black or green triangles. It means uh, prostitutes or criminals. 
The camp management considered that under no circumstance could even the dregs of the German people, yet still part of the superior race, mix with these rotten foreigners, whoever they were. At the beginning, I was repeated to insults, barely concealed threats, and derogatory remarks. I managed to make only harmless diagnosis because I know too well what the intention of the SSR instructions specify that our finding must end with the words unable to work, which clearly mean at a death sentence. I do not add these words to my report. Then uh, in uh, the beginning of April 1943, she was asked by Eduard Wirtz to make gene ecology in the block 10, the station for medical experimentation, Versuch Sarson für medizinische Forschung. And there um, she was sent to the block 10. These are pictures taken by uh, Hans Joachim Lang. The block contained up to 500 guinea pigs, all Jews of diverse nationality, French, Belgian, Greek, Slovak, Dutch. Shortly after arrival in the block, they were registered on different lists according to the experimentation they had to undergo. These gentlemen are competing and don't get sometimes which is other, several lusting after the same prisoner. And she was confronted, confronted to uh, the different me analysis medical doctors, Karl Klauber, Horst Schumann, Eduard Wirtz, and later to Joseph Mengele uh, when she returned to Birkenau. She was also confronted with uh, Maximilian Samuel and uh, she met there Vladislav Dering, which was a Polish surgeon uh, who was uh, arrested and uh, deported to Auschwitz. Uh, the confrontation with, uh, about the confrontation with Eduard Wirs, he said, Dr. Wirs is a typical case of ambivalent personality, at times sensitive to everything human, capable of understanding and at other moments behaving as an indoctrinated Nazi coldly committing what were obvious crimes. And she said, Dr. Wiss called me to ask me whether it was true that I refused. I said it was true. He asked me why, and I said it was contrary to my conception of as a doctor. And he asked me, can't you see that these people are different from you? It means about the Jews. And I answered that there are several other people different from me, beginning with you. And this was uh, called a devastating reply uh, later in 1964. Uh, she was also later confronted with uh, Dr. Joseph Mengele. And uh, she said, Dr. Mengele, an unhinged mind and quite a dangerous man, he plays with human lives like a cat does with mice. Uh, sometimes after my return from Block 10, he summons me to inform me that I would have to take part in this experiment on twins. When I ask him, is this order Final, he answers, my orders are always final. But I learned later through someone to his close circle that he had, that he had said, I can't force her to what she doesn't want to. This is a statement by Dr. Dorota Lorska. Dr. Hoval was a model of a doctor performing her function, treating them as a mission in all situations. This exceptionally modest, noble woman was able to make a very sober evaluation of the situation in the camp. She was the one who explained to me the activity of the SS doctor in the Block 10 during the first days of my arrival. At the same time, she made it clear that nothing could save us, witnesses of the crimes committed by the SS physicians, since they would not permit the world ever to learn what they were capable of doing. The logical conclusion to be drawn for, by Hovell from this reasoning was that during the short period which we would be permitted to live in the camp, we should act like human beings in regard to our fellow prisoners. And also the statement by Dr. Alina Brevda, I learned that her name was Dr. Adelaide Hovell, and I went to have a talk with her. I found she was a very tall, slender woman of immense dignity and an air of unmistakable authority. She was a Christian, I learned. That she was also an idealist was immediately apparent in her eyes, which were soft and dreamy. She seemed to belong to a quite different world. She was about the same age as myself, 38, a very quiet, composed woman, as one could see a strong will of her own, what she believed in, in she, she would fight for and die for. This is the opinion of Adelaide about uh, the Nazi medical doctor, very surprising. Some of these gentlemen have no great medical knowledge, 
that it is rather easy to pull them the wool over their eyes. And since they do, they do not want to bluntly display their shortcomings, they authorize more things than they would. However, they are quite wary of, about us. And more in astonishing, I am specialized in psychiatry, and often the behavior of the German doctors reminded me of the psychologic attitudes of some backwards. In fact, they are feeble-minded who always seek to conceal their weakness with dreams of compensation. And if one stands up, um, up, up them a little, they are unresponsible. They are disassembled. About the terrible question of the selection, she wrote, I am sure that all the terrible things done in the world begin with small acts of cowardice. At Auschwitz, for instance, we prisoner doctors had to face this terrible question about the selection. That is, we were asked by the SS to decide which patients were too ill or weak to be able to work properly. And if we selected this patient, we knew perfectly that they would be dispatched immediately to the gas chambers. Many of us refused to take part in this process. I myself refused to write the words unfit for work and any medical papers. And what happened was that another prisoner doctor did it on my behalf in order that I should, shouldn't have my head chopped off. If the prisoner doctors refused to write the words, then an SS doctor made the selection and we found that they were taking away many of the patients who were in reasonably good health. So what happened? Some of the prisoner doctors felt themselves obliged to be sure that only those who were really likely to die anyhow would be chosen. Uh, she was saved by Orly. Uh, she was a German woman prisoner, Lega Eltes. Uh, in the camp, she was called the Angel of Auschwitz because uh, Orly told her that she would be sent back to the Block 10 where she could be executed. And uh, Orly said to her, you should guide in concerning you should give in the concerning the experience. And I answered that it was not possible. Then don't take care of anything. She gave me a sleeping drug and nothing happened. The day after, nobody came to take me. Later, I regained my duties in Birkenau. <coughs> in November 1943, she was in turn to catch uh, typhus. And she wrote, my colleagues mentioned that later that a group of these colleagues means the SS doctors came to me to see me and one of them pronounced it. this happened to her because she didn't follow orders she will die but of course she survived to this uh, illness in August she was sent to the Ravensbrück camp with uh, only 50 survivors of the uh, of the code boy uh, about 20 229 uh, uh, people, only 50, uh, survived uh, in Birkenau. And there she met Dr. Percival Traite uh, and also the Dr. Alf Adolf Winkelmann, the SS doctors. Uh, about Percival Traite, she said, from a born, from a British mother, this young man, timid and self effacing cultured and sentimental, took pleasure in bestiality and brutality. He especially liked to humiliate the deported woman he had taken as physician or nurses. And Odile Rouvel said, Trait hates me. And she also, she met Dr. Alfo, Adolf Winkelmann. Dr. Adolf Winkelmann called the executioner in charge of selection, carries always a submachine gun. Two minutes. Two minutes, okay. Uh, in, um, Ravensbrück, she met, uh, she saved the life of Ad Breur, which is a Dutch prisoner, a painter. And uh, Ad Breur made this uh, uh, picture of her. And uh, Erna Lugebiel, a former prisoner in Ravensbrück, uh, wrote in her memories, the doctor in the revue was a French Dr. Hoval. She was tall and had short, dark hair. When the SS came, everyone squeezed down in order to get out of the evil. When she spoke to the SS, became, she became always taller. She almost expanded before them. I must still to this day wonder how great a respect the SS had to this woman. She said, what I did was nothing. And besides, if I had the luck to be able to refuse, it was certainly not due to myself, but simply because I had in my instinct 
uh, which told me that there, that there were more important things in life than saving own, own skin. Uh, she, Adelaide Hovell, was detained and deported during 37 months from June 2 to 1942 to July 2, 1945. She survived to the terrible condition of life in prisons and camps. She survived to diphtheria and typhus and uh, she, she survived to an attempt of execution. And she was the first to report on the experience performed in Auschwitz and Ravensbrück. At, uh, uh, she wrote uh, this text in a, which was published in a thesis uh, sustained in Paris in 1946 by André Abraham David Lettich. He was a, um, a medical student who was uh, deported uh, to Auschwitz. There was also the Deering case in London. And Leon Uri uh, said after this uh, trial, one of the most electrifying moments of the trial was when Dr. Hoval took the stand. This woman was later described, described in his humation by the Jews as one of the greatest and most courageous human beings to ever testimony in an English court. That echoes my sentiment, and it echoes the sentiment of everyone who has had the honor of meeting this lady. And he added, I may add that if he had no more friends like Dr. Hoval, there could never have been a Nazi area. She got the Medal of the Writers in 1965. She, uh, she got the Medal in 1966. And Moshe Beski said, from thousands of files we have handled at Yad Yashem, we have learned that it was possible to aid and to rescue Jews in every known circumstances, even with the death camps themselves. In Auschwitz, for example, there was an extraordinary selfless physician, Dr. Adelaide Howard, who was sent to the camp because she had protested so adamantly to the Gestapo in France about the cruel treatment of Jews. She committed suicide in October 1988 after providing her care for years to an old sick close friend who shared her home until her death. Dr. Howell decided to end her life. She prepared herself for a long time, meticulously, and when all was in order, always with the utmost calm, she voluntarily crossed the last threshold. It was one year after Primo Levi. Thank you. <laughs>